This week on Quadriga, power struggle in Romania, democracy in danger. Could it be curtains for Traian Basescu? Romania's center-right president has been in office for eight years. But last week, the country's parliament voted to suspend him. The decision has been approved by the country's top court, paving the way for a referendum on his future. The man determined to force him from office is the new Social Democrat Prime Minister Victor Ponta. Coming after other attempts to curb democratic institutions, the events have sparked alarm among Romania's EU partners. Brussels is concerned at what it sees as a violation of the rule of law. Your host this week, Ali Aslan. Hello and welcome to Quadriga. It's not as if the EU is lacking any drama these days with the euro crisis, but the political struggle, the power struggle in Romania has certainly sh sent shockwaves around Brussels these days. What does it all mean and what are the details of this particular conflict? That's what I am going to talk about today with three experts who've been following the story very closely. Welcome to Kai Olaf Lang, who is an expert on Eastern Europe at the German Institute for International and Security Affairs. Robert Schwarz is heading the Romanian desk here at Deutsche Welle. And Anneli Ute Gabani is a political scientist focusing on Romania. Robert Schwarz, uh, as I said, just when the EU thought it can't get any worse with the Euro, Euro crisis, here we have the, the political crisis uh, sending shockwaves over from Bucharest. F explain to us, how could it even get, get this far? Well, I don't think in a democracy there is a problem to impeach a president if he has to be impeached and if you have the majority in the parliament. But the way how Victor Ponta and Krin Antonescu, his uh, second leader of this new um, social liberal union, they both um, had a speed in impeaching the president and tried to create facts um, very quickly. Um, I think there are at least three points we have to uh, speak about. First of all, uh, Victor Ponta has to stay to his word and has to respect the decisions of the Constitutional Court. Uh, we know that uh, end of June, he didn't respect the decision of the Constitutional Court and he went to the summit of the European Union in spite of the decision uh, that the president has to represent Romania in Brussels at that summit. Um, the second point is that uh, Krin Antonescu, the now uh, acting president at interim, um, a couple of days later after that summit said that the Constitutional Court of Romania is a shame for the country and they have to change the judges. And the third point, uh, a well-known Romanian oligarch um, and one of the prominent figures of the Social Liberal Union said uh, on one of his own uh, TV stations that um, the new union has to put the justice under control to get the whole power in Romania. So I think when politicians speak like this, then we can see that democracy is indeed in danger. So Anneli Ute Gabani, the problem seems to be that the new Prime Minister, Victor Ponta, as Robert Schwarz was saying, is now trying to get rid, if you will, through an impeachment process of the uh, president, of President Basescu. Uh, what do you make of this? What do you make of this whole conflict? Well, uh, my problem is that it's uh, very difficult for me as a researcher of, of a long time research on Romania to separate what's going on now from uh, what has been going on before. And uh, what I've seen uh, since the advent to power, the election of Mr. Basescu as president of Romania, I remember very well that from the very start, uh, he declared and he tried to implement what he declared to change the constitution of Romania. Uh, he uh, was, uh, he started saying and he tried to do so um, to change the prerogatives of the president which are fixed in the Romanian constitution. The Romanian president has a purely representative uh, function 
Uh, which doesn't mean that he has to represent uh, Romania at uh, EU summits. That doesn't, the Constitution doesn't say that. Uh, secondly, that he has to uh, uh, protect the Constitution and that he should mediate between the powers. Uh, this is what was too little for uh, Mr. Basescu. He wanted to intervene in politics. He uh, tried to impose uh, the interests of his party, which was also against the Constitution. So what I see now, and it is a political crisis, uh, it's like a kind of rollback of the decisions which uh, have been taken uh, during uh, uh, the Basescu era. And what is even worse, political cli the political climate, the uh, political culture has changed very much over the past eight years. So what we see now is, in a, in a way, uh, uh, this, uh, and Robert was right to say, uh, hasty uh, implementation of measures, but uh, some of them has be, have been validated by the Constitutional Court. Yet, uh, it is not something which should be unilaterally criticized, I would say. Kai Olaf Lang, we are seeing this struggle between the current Prime Minister and the President in Romania. Do you think the EU is overreacting? Do you think that perhaps they should uh, let this all play out? Or do they have a point when they say democracy is in danger in, in Romania? I think the EU is well advised that um, it is uh, following quite closely what is going on in Romania because there have been other cases which were obviously uh, the standard principles of democracy and rule of law have been violated. And neighboring Hungary is uh, the most recent case of that. Um, it's, I think, too early to say that uh, democracy is in danger in Romania. However, uh, I would agree to all those who say um, there are worrying tendencies. And one thing is uh, the uh, obvious intention of those in power to uh, overcome the strict division of powers. Um, taking away competencies from the uh, Constitutional Court by ruling that their verdicts on parliamentary decisions uh, have, that, that the Constitutional Court has no say on the, on the, on the uh, decisions of Parliament is one of the hints of that. But what is the political background of this all? Uh, I think very much has to do with uh, the interests of uh, the ruling party and the ruling coalition. Um, obviously, at least there were hints of that, uh, the Nastasek case. So uh, the former prime minister who is uh, considered the, the mentor of Mr. Ponta, uh, Mr. Nastase was uh, sentenced because of um, fraud allegations. Uh, that was the, the tipping point when, uh, when uh, the prime minister and his political allies uh, went over to action. So, and I think this is an important difference to, to neighboring Hungary. I would say Viktor Orban is a transformer with a broad majority, he wants to change the country fundamentally, among other things, to, uh, to fight corruption and organized crime. Uh, it seems to me that uh, Mr. Ponta is rather a, a protagonist of the status quo, trying to protect certain networks and interests. And Robert, I think you're perfectly right, but there is one other point I want to, to underline. Uh, Mr. Ponta has a problem with uh, his uh, doctoral thesis. He is accused of plagiarism, and a commission uh, just validated this plagiarism. They said, yes, he worked by copy-paste one-third of his uh, doctoral thesis, and this was a commission uh, with uh, university professors, with members of the Romanian Academy, and uh, Victor Ponta just dismissed the commission. So um, it is the Nastase case, you're perfectly right, but I think it's uh, the Ponta case too. Um, on the other hand, um, I want to say something to the Romanian constitution, Anneli Utegabani. Indeed, the president has a representative, uh, a representative function, but he's responsible for the foreign policy, for defense policy, and he is he names the prime minister. So it's, it's, it's a kind of uh, uh, half presidential, half parliamentary republic in, in Romania. And the constitution works perfectly if the president, the majority in the parliament, and the government are from the, from the same party or have the same color. But if you have the so-called cohabitation, like in Paris, nothing works. And we have here a cohabitation not working at all. 
I'm terribly sorry to contradict you, uh, Robert Schwarz, because uh, um, the Constitution uh, has been uh, changed in 2003 yes. to exclude any doubt about the prerogatives of the President. We remember that before 2003 even, uh, during the uh, presidency of Emil Constantinescu, the representative of the uh, um, uh, civic, civil society, uh, he had a problem uh, with getting rid of one of his uh, uh, prime ministers. And this is why the constitution was changed afterwards, in order to leave no doubt what the prerogatives of the president are. And the president has no say uh, on the formulation and the execution of uh, the country's foreign policy. He is to oversee the functioning of the constitution. But Mr. Basescu has arrogated for himself this right. It is not in the Constitution. It is. I have the text <laughs> in my bag. But anyway, uh, uh, it is, uh, and he has no uh, right. And by the way, you said that it would have been his right to go to Brussels yes. to the summit. This is not true. That's what the Constitutional Court figured the out. Consti it was not the Constitutional Court. It was its president who, uh, who uh, acted unlawfully in order to announce uh, uh, a decision which has not to this day uh, been published with the motives. So uh, there is no, and it was not um, You see, it's very difficult, sorry for interrupting way. you, yeah. to, to analyze what happens in Romania yeah. because um, you see there are very yeah. few clear things, everything yeah. is um, kind of fishy, I think. Well, I think <laughs> if we can't solve this problem here yeah. today, yeah. then... Uh, but, Kayo Laflan... Just, just one remark. I mean, the, from the political point of view and from the EU perspective, the decisive question is, is this an ephemeris uh, story where just one political actor wanted to eliminate his old rival? Mm. Uh, or is this the beginning of a strategic policy of power concentration. And I think we might be at the beginning of the story because after the elections, the parliamentary elections and the presidential elections, mm -hmm. which will take place later on this year, we will have no cohabitation. Uh, we will have a parallel power structure in terms of the political colors. Um, and this might be a, a real start to this new form of, of power concentration. Don't forget the, gov the, 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 the government wanted to try the electoral system, mm -hmm. to, to change the electoral system, to introduce the first-past-the-post system. This was rejected by the Constitution Constitutional Court, but we can assume that the, the new government will have an absolute majority or even a qualified majority. Could be. Uh, and then we have, uh, we'll have a, a uni-colored uh, uh, situation on the command hates of the Romanian politics. Yeah. Well, as we know, this is not the first time that uh, the parliament in Romania is trying to unseat Basescu. He's been through this procedure before. Let's have a look. This is not the first time the Romanian parliament has voted to suspend President Basescu. In 2007, Romanians voted him back into office after a month, thwarting his opponents, who had taken umbrage at Basescu's ways of fighting corruption in the political and judicial systems. They accused him of unconstitutional behavior. This time around, the center-right president is in a weaker position. His austerity policies, backed by his political allies, have proved unpopular with the electorate. Basescu has also been criticized by his own voters, who feel he's not done enough to shake up the political system. The referendum at the end of July could spell the end of Trajan Basescu. Well, Robert Schwartz, we just saw Basescu has been through this once before. He's been president since 2004. Do you think he's going to escape once more, or do you think this is uh, the end of his run? I don't know, because uh, now it's uh, much more difficult to impeach him. Um, after the um, Constitutional Court ruled out that um, the referendum has uh, to be validated only if 50% plus one of the electorate would participate. And I think it's very difficult um, uh, to, to get this uh, majority um, because we have, we have summer holidays. And on the other hand, um, the, um, uh, I think, and on the other hand, I think um, the party of Mr. Basescu, Pedele, 
will not go to the vote. So it's very difficult to get the 50% plus one. Um, on the other hand, I think uh, what you said, it would be better for Romania to have uh, one color in all the institutions, so um, uh, there, there will be no more fighting between these institutions, but which is the right color? Let, let the electorate decide. Kyle Lang, the EU is rather concerned. Uh, Ponta, of course, was in Brussels yesterday. He held talks. Uh, Chancellor Merkel, German Chancellor Merkel, has had some harsh words, harsh criticism uh, for Ponta. Do you think it's wise for the EU to uh, take side, if you will, in this, in this uh, procedure, or rather let the Romanian people, let the Romanian system play this out? The EU should not take sides with anyone, but it should look at the compliance with uh, rules and with uh, values like democracy, liberty and the rule of law. Um, but of course, the Hungarian lesson tells us at least two things. Um, first of all, the, uh, the toolbox is limited. The EU has a heavy gun, and that's Article 7. So you can start a procedure which would lead eventually to the suspension of membership rights. But this, is, this demands a serious and persistent breach of uh, fundamental values, and there are high institutional thresholds. So this is hardly possible. Uh, and on the other hand, there's a poss possibility of infringement procedures, too, which is a rather technical procedure. There is nothing in between. So it's a certain lack of appropriate instruments. The second lesson we, we uh, have learned from the Hungarian case is there is a, a partisan factor in this whole discussion. So uh, Viktor Orban uh, could and can be relatively sure that nothing serious will happen to him as long as the conservative heads of state and government in the European Union are in the boat. So he should not exaggerate, otherwise he's at risk in, in losing their support, but there's a certain partisan loyalty. And the same factor uh, is, is working right now uh, in the opposite way, with uh, the Social Democrat, um, uh, Mr. Ponta, being supported by, by his political friends in the European Parliament and uh, in, in, in uh, some of the capitals. But there are critics, even from Mr. Steinmeier in Berlin and from Mr. Schulz, the Speaker of the European Parliament. And I think after the meeting um, with uh, Schulz, Ponta made a step back and said that they will respect the decisions of the Constitutional Court. So I think the pressure uh, coming from the Social Democrats on Victor Ponta are very positive. This is very important to know how the family reacts. So I think uh, they should be something like um, uh, uh, there should be something like uh, um, friendly criticism with solidarity. Yeah. yeah? So uh, no, no uh, Romania bashing, which is counterproductive, mm -hmm. but uh, exerting influence not always publicly, but through other channels. Uh, I'm terribly sorry to contradict again, but uh, uh, what we saw in the case of Romania was that uh, from the very beginning of this uh, governmental crisis and political crisis, if you wish, we had uh, very, very strong criticism coming from the uh, conservative side of the European Parliament and from conservative heads of government in the EU. And very late in the day, we had a certain... Uh, support mixed with uh, advice to uh, abide to the rules of democracy and of the European Union on the one hand, but also critical uh, from uh, uh, social democratic politicians, uh, by the way, only yesterday. Uh, from Mr. Svoboda and uh, Mr. Schulz, who represents rather the European Parliament as a whole than uh, the social democratic uh, uh, part of it. So uh, we had something coming very close, let me provoke you, uh, to Romania bashing, uh, which was also uh, uh, in a way even instigated or started by a Romanian uh, representative of uh, Basescu's party in uh, Brussels. Well, I don't think, Anneli Ute Gabani, that if you, uh, are, uh, if you don't agree with, uh, uh, with politics in a country, uh, you can say that's Romania bashing. It's, uh, I said it in, in there are critics. It, there are critics against the politicians, 
and not yeah. against the Romanian people or against Romania. Yeah. So we have to be here very, but very But it came different. so close to it, you know. I'm, uh, I, I, I felt, you know, uh, the censor is very close to saying, and also in some commentaries in the Western press, saying, well, after all, this is lodged in the political culture of the Romanians and in their history, and uh, it's, it's uh, always very close to it. And, uh, uh, well, Robert Schwartz, this crisis, this political crisis and struggle in Romania right now comes at a rather bad time, doesn't yes. it? Romania's yes. economy is not doing too good. The currency is down and uh, uh, they are uh, on the fringe of, of agreeing and discussing a new IMF-backed yes. economic package. Mm -hmm. um, r this, of course, takes away, this political struggle, if you will, takes away from a very important issue, namely how to get Romania back on track economically. Yes, um, you're right. But on the other hand, we um, uh, don't forget that the austerity policy of the former conservative government, a policy active supported by President Pasescu, uh, was the right political thing for the crisis in Romania. So um, Pasescu is now impeached because he supported the austerity policy that saved Romania from collapsing. We don't have to forget that. On the other hand, um, Romania is the second poorest country in the European Union. Um, you have to know that the GDP per capita in Romania is uh, only 49% of the average GDP in the European Union. And to understand what that means, Luxembourg is on first place with 274% of this average. So the gap between the very rich and the very poor in Romania is bigger and bigger. 22% um, of the Romanians are poor. And poor means they have less than 60% of the average income of the population. One third of the, child, of, of, of the children and of the, of the young generation are considered to be poor. So Romania has a big problem um, and they have to, to um, resolve it uh, with the help of, of the credits from uh, the international uh, institutes. And if there is no political stability, they won't get the money. So they have a problem. On the other hand, we have to say that um, unemployment is between 7 and 8 percent in Romania. Um, but 2 or 3 million Romanians are working abroad. Um, so uh, even that figure is uh, very clear. Romania has big economic and financial problems. Big economic and financial problems, which led to much needed austerity measures, which in turn proved rather unpopular with the Romanian public, leading to many shakeups uh, in, the, in the office of the prime minister. Victor Ponta now is the third prime minister in less than six months. Let's have a look at who Victor Ponta is. Victor Ponta is the third person to be appointed prime minister in Romania this year, following the collapse of two center-right governments. The left-leaning politician took over as head of a caretaker cabinet in early May. This is a special government designed for special times. It has a limited mandate of six months until the parliamentary elections. Many have been surprised by the bitter political power struggle that followed. Ponta accuses Basescu of overstepping his authority and trying to influence judicial affairs. One reason for his anger is the fate of Ponta's political and academic mentor, ex-Prime Minister Adrian Nastasi, recently sentenced to two years in prison for corruption. Ponta himself faces plagiarism allegations linked to a doctoral thesis supervised by Nastasi. Aneli Utegabani, we just saw Victor Ponta, the third prime minister in six months in Romania. He himself is facing election this November. Do you think uh, amid all these uh, struggles that he's currently facing and perhaps even producing, he can survive the vote? Well, it's... Uh uh, very uh, important to see how the referendum was, will turn out. Because uh, uh, although I, I would say that uh, 
a well-grounded de democracy should be able uh, to uh, also stand uh, cohabitation. Uh, and we have had that in other countries too. Maybe it's not so pleasant for the holders of office, but uh, I think a democracy shouldn't only look at the persons uh, who uh, represent various parties. Uh, we will have parliamentary elections in uh, the fall. Uh, it is still open whether we'll also have presidential elections, and it will not be, be Mr. Ponta, but it will be uh, probably Mr. Antonescu, the liberal, who is going to uh, stand against I don't know uh, whom. Uh, what uh, we were saying before, I think it's perhaps interesting to see that we've had not only an austerity crisis uh, in a situation which in a way uh, resembles uh, what we had in Germany uh, uh, in 2003-2004 when Mr. Schröder also came up with uh, a very, very difficult reform and austerity program. And in fact, uh, those who inherited it were happy that they hadn't got to implement it and are praising it uh, ever after. Uh, in a way, uh, Mr. Ponta will also be confronted with uh, the uh, problems arising from the austerity policy. And uh, it is perhaps, however, important to see that Romania is not a failed economy, but Romania uh, unjustly and unduly, I think, suffered uh, from the financial crisis when the Western banks, which had uh, invaded Romania uh, after its uh, or let's say during the time of its uh, access to the European Union, then wanted to withdraw their capital from Romania. But the debt ratio, for instance, debt to GDP in Romania is uh, less than 40 percent. It's 30 odd percent. So Romania is not in a bad shape. Uh, it had been, uh, um, uh, the economy had been uh, flowering, uh, let's say, before the debt crisis, I mean, relatively, to be sure. And uh, obviously, this fallback into uh, the old uh, uh, austerity measures, which also remember, uh, um, people remember as having gone through already in the 1980s, are one of the problems. Uh, and we had a, pri a problem also of the Democratic Party, which vanished uh, and which lost uh, popular support during the local elections, too. Kai Olaf Lang, Romania has been an EU member since 2007, and you just mentioned the problems that the EU has been facing with Hungary, and now Romania as well. Do you see this as part of a greater Eastern European, perhaps, malaise? Do you think that perhaps membership, EU membership, came too soon for these countries? There are certainly some of the countries uh, which uh, had something like a premature accession, and I think Bulgaria and Romania belong to this group of countries. Um, what we're seeing now is that the leftovers of the accession process uh, are re-emerging or are emerging. Um, if you look at last year's uh, report of Transparency International trying to measure corruption, Romania is on rank 75 and it lost six places as compared to the year earlier. Bulgaria is, is even worse. Um, we also have incredible weaknesses with the absorption of EU funds, which are usually seen as uh, an important instrument to overcome the economic blows. Uh, at the beginning of the year, the then uh, Minister for European Affairs in Romania said that Romania was able to absorb 6% of the regional funds. This is incredibly low. And I, th low. And I think what we are seeing in Romania and Bulgaria, but also in other, in other countries of the region, is a soft state uh, and uh, the political administrative system um, which has to be reformed, um, uh, a, a state apparatus which is uh, captured and even colonialized by political parties and this has to change. Now there are some instruments the EU still has in the case of Romania and Bulgaria as well. For example, a regular um, monitoring report, including benchmarks in the field of justice reforms, uh, fight with corruption, and this is going to be published uh, in a moment. This will certainly have uh, um, an impact on what I think is the major objective for Romania in the next years Schengen. to reach to reach its full fledged integration into the European Union. I mean, Romania is a member formally, a 100% member of the EU since the moment of its accession in 2007. However, there are fields where it's de facto not part of it. And, and Schengen, of course, is one of the most important things. And although there is no official nexus 
between the assessment in this regular uh, report, uh, there is a political connection between it. And I think this is a risk we have with a projected um, infighting in Romania or also with uh, a one-colored uh, uh, government uh, that the country will be busy with itself and it, that it will be paralyzed and the necessary reform dynamics will not not emerge. And Robert Schwartz, uh, Schengen was already yes. mentioned. The European Commission came out strongly uh, criticizing Victor Ponta and saying this might, as a result, these actions by Ponta, as a result, might lead to a postponement mm -hmm. of, of Schengen. Yes, I think Schengen is a very good instrument um, for countries like Romania uh, or Bulgaria. On the other hand, uh, I don't think it was a mistake uh, to you know, take Romania and Bulgaria inside the European Union because there was the political will and the Union uh, wants to extend uh, itself. Um, don't forget the Western Balkans. Um, but I think the European Union has to create uh, new instruments for the uh, process of integration. Because it cannot be uh, that uh, to the moment of the, of the uh, integration you have to work hard uh, different um, chapters, and after the countries are inside the European Union, they can do what they want. I think the European Union, or almost do what they want, we have the monitoring or the MCV, but um, in Bucharest and in Sofia, they're just uh, laughing at uh, those reports. Uh, I know that from, from the politicians there. Um, but I think uh, the European Union has a problem on its periphery. Uh, we have Greece. We have Hungary, we have Romania, we have other states, and I think uh, the European Union has to create new instruments to react very quickly and very harsh. So it needs a rescue package for fundamental laws yeah, and I think so. democracy. Mm -hmm. Another EU package. Uh, Anneli Utegabani, we've been talking about how the struggle in Romania, political struggle, is being perceived abroad by various EU leaders. How is the struggle being perceived and absorbed within Romania? Well, this is a big problem uh, because um, uh, the, the political climate and the political culture has deteriorated over the past years to such a degree that uh, you can hardly uh, expect uh, people uh, to be able to reach uh, a sound judgment on uh, political affairs in their country. Uh, newspapers, televisions are just uh, indescribably uh, politicized, polarized. Uh, the style is harsh in order not to say suburban from time to time. And uh, uh, this is what makes me also uh, be rather concerned about the outcome uh, of the referendum first and of the elections. But I also ex expect some uh, things uh, to uh, even uh, vitiate the political climate uh, even more before the referendum will come. Because, you know, uh, certain people have um, brought into their possession certain uh, uh, files of various services and we can expect these to emerge now uh, before the election to really turn it into a rather dirty uh, business, I'm afraid. Yeah, but on the other hand, I think the Romanians are tired of all that political sure, fighting. Sure. So they will stay at home and will watch television, as you said. Yes, and this is why, on the other hand, I mean, they will be off to vacation if they are not going uh, to, to work uh, somewhere. We don't know exactly the number of those uh, working uh, abroad, mm -hmm. uh, earning their living there. But uh, they are really tired of this political uh, games. And this is why, in this uh, respect, you have the voices coming from abroad, getting the major, even if not the decisive, impact on the political opinion. So if Mrs. Uh, Chancellor Merkel or, I don't know, uh, Mrs. Redding says something, this is the only voice which really counts uh, right now in Romania. So you're saying that the criticism from yes. various EU leaders is not counterproductive? Um, it's not counterproductive, it's being, it's being heard. Uh, my problem is that I would like it to be more balanced and going to the essence of things and not to stick with political parties, political families in the EU and with certain persons. I would like it to become principle. 
Kai Olaf Lange? Uh, I would support that because it's about, as I said, about the uh, rule, rule compliance uh, mainly. Um, I think what is Im Im important with, uh, with Romania, um, and I think here we should not uh, underestimate the relevance of these monitoring reports, which of course are not taken seriously by many, but I think as long as there is a link with the Schengen decision, the EU has an instrument with this. And if you look at what, what the, the way the country or the political leadership treats this monitoring, this is, I think, quite important. Because Borisov, from the, the prime minister from Bulgaria, once said, um, it's something we don't like, uh, but it, in some sense it helps us, yeah. these benchmarks. I don't know if he said that seriously, but the message was we have understood it. At the end, it's something we need for ourselves. Whereas in Romania, uh, uh, there were uh, at some point uh, voices saying when Croatia, uh, in the context of Croatia's accession to the European Union, we have a monitoring on corruption and justice reform. Croatia won't have it Which is as, a, as a future member. Why is that? So um, we even, uh, there were some voices calling for uh, uh, vetoing the Croatian membership as long as uh, Romania is obliged to go through this uh, monitoring process. And that was not very um, uh, 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 tactical, right? Because they, they, the Romanian leadership should have said, we would like to overcome it because it's, in, it's, a, it's a purpose which serves our country. And Hungary has been mentioned a couple of times here. It, it caused a uh, huge outrage within the EU for a while, but now not so much. It's not so much on the agenda. Is that perhaps something that Romanian leaders are counting on, that this wave will, will pass too? I mean, uh, Hungary was, of course, a test. It was a test for, uh, for uh, a member state in this case, hung, uh, Hungary. But it was also, it was also a test for, for the EU. And I think one of the messages of the Hungarian uh, case is that you uh, ha you cannot reach everything. You have to be smart. And Viktor Orban was wise enough um, to adapt his reforms. So uh, when we had the big squabble around the media law, he went into a dialogue with the respective commissioner and he changed the media law in rather marginal terms. Mm -hmm. However, he had a certificate from the European Union that his law is OK. If you look at the law on the, on the Hungarian National Bank, Viktor Orban also understood that without changing this law, he will not enter negotiations with the EU and the IMF on, new, uh, on a new credit line. So um, you have to be flexible to a certain extent. And I think the EU and the member states are more sensitive now after the experience with Hungary about developments in member states. Do you think the experience with Austria uh, 10 or 12 years or 14 years ago with um, the right-wing FPÖ Haider, um, you remember the case, uh, could that be um, a kind of experience uh, to be put in uh, the Romanian case or in the Hungarian uh, case? Uh, the, the Hyder experience was a bust and it was a, a good example how not to do it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and I think the EU has learned from that. Um, I think uh, one of the, the big questions is, due to the relative um, lack of appropriate instruments, there are some instruments, you know, kind of member states have an obligation to um, fulfill the acquis communautaire and there are the infringement procedures and so on. Uh, nevertheless, there are some weaknesses. The member states play an important role, and I here I would completely agree to what Amali uh, Utegabani um, said. There are some of the member states, especially Germany, which are the key partners for Hungary, for Romania. So it's very important what Germany, as a key political and economic partner to these countries, does. The problem is that none of the member states want to be too tough and want to be the bad guy in this in this game. Robert Schwartz. Uh Prime Minister Victor Ponta's efforts to dispense uh, uh, President uh, Basescu has not caused a huge outcry, if you will, within Romania, has it? Could this be interpreted as, as a support for him, or would that, be, would that be too simple, too wrong? No, it's not a support for him. It's only that what we tried to say uh, um, some minutes ago, the Romanians are tired. It's a political game, it's a political fight, and they don't want to listen to that fight anymore. So I don't think it's a support uh, neither for Mr. Ponta nor for Mr. Basescu. 
It's just a game and they have to play it uh, from the beginning to the end. Anneli Utegabani, the impeachment procedures, the referendum is being scheduled for July the 29th, so not too long from now. If you had a glass bowl and given any indication uh, that, that you are sensing, uh, also from within your sources in Romania, what do you think will happen on July the 29th? It's terribly difficult to say. I think it will really depend whether uh, the one or the other side will be able to mobilize the voters to go uh, to the election, to the referendum. Uh, if uh, people stay away, and as Robert Schwartz said, this is probable, then this will be an asset uh, in favor of Mr. Basescu. If uh, the other side, uh, Mr. Ponta, will be able to mobilize people to go and vote, I think it will be in his favor. But I think it will be in the favor of democracy uh, if nobody after the referendum could say, well, we just won or lost because somebody stayed away. People should really be mobilized to go, have their say, because a referendum is a chance, and uh, then not complain afterwards. Kaiola Flan, what is your prediction? Um, Split government is an option, the continuation of split government. Uh, and um, I would say split government, split governance with the continu continuation of, of some sort of a cohabitation in many democracies is a chance for consensus because both sides uh, need each other. But it also can be a very destructive situation where both sides block each other. And um, I'm a little bit worried. This, is, this might happen uh, in Romania. Yeah, promised to do. Robert Schwarz, Everyone very quickly, will Basescu survive another round of impeachment procedures? I think he will survive because uh, the referendum uh, will not be validated because of uh, the lack of participation of the voters. Well, we will certainly find out on July 29th. Until then, we will continue to monitor the situation in Romania very closely, of course. I want to thank my guests for sharing their insights and knowledge into this subject matter. Thank you out there for watching and looking forward to seeing you again next week for a new edition of Quadriga.